Today's mind bender is a trick to make your friends think you can read their minds. Food. What? That's what you're thinking about. I just read your mind. Ooh. Time for mind benders. Today, we're going to make these ouchers think about carrots, but fool them into thinking we've read their minds. First, we need to distract them. OK, dear, you ready? What's one plus one? Two. What's two plus two? Four. What's three plus three? Six. Name a vegetable. Carrot. Do you want to have a look at the little piece of paper under your chair? And now do you believe in mind reading? Yeah. <laughs> and it's not only Dia's mind we can read. Name a vegetable. Carrot. Carrot. Uh, carrot. We couldn't read everyone's mind, though. Name a vegetable. Uh, broccoli. Cucumber. Cucumber. Hmm. OK, so a few minds slipped through the net, but 16 out of 20 did say... So we weren't reading your mind, we just knew that you would say carrot. Because most people, the first vegetable that pops into their head is the carrot. Why do you think so many of you said carrot? Because it's the most simplest. Wow! It's probably what you eat the most. In fact, the reason most people say carrot is all due to your brain's secret filing system. And we're going to show you how. There you go. So this filing cabinet is Dr Zahn's brain, and you can see he's got different bits of it for storing information about vegetables, about his favourite pets, and about dance moves. In each of those drawers, something has to be on the top, and we call that thing the prototypical item. It's the item that represents what you most commonly think of when you think of that category. And most people say carrots simply because they are one of the most common vegetables. Was that a good mind bender or what? Yeah! Who here thinks they know the name of Dr Zahn's teddy bear? Isha. Mr Grumbles. Mr Grumbles is the right answer. But did you know, Isha, that Mr Grumbles also has some cousins? This is a picture of Mr Grumbles' cousins! Can everyone tell me the colour of the bear on the right? Purple! What colour is the bear on the left? Orange! You're absolutely certain, are you? Yes! So what if I told you that, in fact, this is two pictures of the same bear. Their name is Robin, and they are red. Both bears are completely red. The one on the left has yellow stripes running over it, which makes it appear orange. The one on the right has blue stripes running over it, making it appear purple. It's a good trick, isn't it? Yeah. It's called an optical illusion. OK, so how do we do it? Aluma. You can't really see the red stripes because the yellow stripes are in front of the red stripes. OK, OK, I like that explanation. Felicity, what do you reckon? I'm the purple bear. So blue and the red might come just to make a purple. Perfect. And so if you mix blue and red together, you get purple, don't you? Right. So those are brilliant explanations. The truth is that scientists don't exactly know how this optical illusion works. There are two places an optical illusion can happen, in your eye or in your brain. But it's probably that when you're far away, your brain sees a combination of colours. On this side, you see red and yellow, which makes orange. And on this side, you simply see red and blue combined, which makes purple. Did we bend your minds? Yeah! <laughs> OK, I need volunteers, Victor and James. Are you ready? Victor, I'm going to give this to you. And what you're going to do is spin the disc in your hand. James, we're going to stare at the middle of the disc. And then after 30 seconds, you're going to look at my face. All right, start spinning, Victor. Three, two, one. Look at my face. Wow. <laughs> is it good? What do you see? Oh. His face is mad. We need to see this for ourselves. Whoa! Time to get everyone in a spin. Very high quality spinning from Gracie. <laughs> <laughs> it's like in. You didn't like it. No. <laughs> what do you mean? The heads were moving. Well, I think it's amazing. So how do you think it works? I think because hmm? your eyes just kept keep on looking at the spinner. 
and then when you look at something else, um, the, your mind still thinks it's going on. I really like that answer. So this is called the motion after effect illusion. What's happening is your brain is getting used to the movement of the stripes, so that becomes normal. And then when they stop, your brain is very sensitive to the lack of movement, and that actually makes it generate movement in the opposite direction. So your brain is almost fooling your eyes. But what's really incredible is your brain can rapidly figure out that it is making a mistake, that this is an error. Did I successfully bend your minds? Yeah! It's Dr. Chris's world-famous how to make a hole in your hand trick. So who here thinks we can use the things on this table to make holes in the palms of our hand that we can see through? No! Well, it's time to have a go. Bethany, how did you get on? So I put the tape on my hand and then I put a rubber band over it. Okay. So now you can see through. <laughs> it's not really a hole in your hand, but it's quite, I think it's quite a good creative effort. Yeah, now, Abdul Malik, you had a very simple solution. What did you do? I put black ink in the palm and the back of my hand mm -hmm. to make a little illusion that there's a hole in through my hand. It's a good illusion, but of course we can't quite really see through your hand. Who wants to see how the trick is really done? Me! So you're going to get a piece of paper, you roll it up into a tube, with the tube in one hand, hold it up to the eye on the same side of your body. Keeping both eyes open, hold the other hand in front of the other eye. And now oh, you can see face. through a hole in your hand. <laughs> oh, wow! I can see you right through the middle of my hand. Aye, aye, aye. <laughs> I bet you want to see too. Here we go. Tube up to one eye, other hand up to the other eye, Keep looking through both eyes, and magically, I can seize on through my hand. Why do you think you see a hole in the hand? What's going on in your brain? Sydney, have you got a thought? This eye is seeing your hand, and this eye is seeing through the tube, and your brain wants to make it all one picture. That is a perfect explanation. Whenever you look at things, your brain is having to process two images, one from your right eye, one from your left eye. And so most of the time, you see more or less the same thing with both eyes. But if you make a hole in front of one eye and hold your hand up to the other, your brain puts the two images together and you see the hole as being in your hand. And that was Dr Chris's world famous how to make a hole in your hand trick. Get ready, because I have a mind bender trick up my sleeve, and this trick is all about colour. Let's see how this lot get on as I bamboozle their brains. The lab needs a makeover. I've decided to paint it grey, and I need you to help me pick the right shade. I've got this one here, and I've got this one here. Can you help me pick the lighter, brighter shade? Yeah. 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 Who wants to go first? Maya. Remember, I want the light, bright grey. Do I want the one on the right or the one on the left? It's the left. Thank you, Ma. Have a go at home. Which one of these grey squares do you think is the lighter, brighter shade? Do you agree with Maya? Let's see what everyone else thinks. Not the left. The left. Well, a lot of people plumping for the one on the left. I think the one on the left. I think the one on the left. The one on the yeah, right. The grey on the right gets its first vote. I think one on the left. And the results are in. So it was a resounding vote for the grey shade on the left, with one exception. Well, I actually have a sample of the grey on the left right here, OK? So this is an identical sample. Can you all see that? Yeah. OK, so you all agree those two colours are identical. Yeah. Well, now have a look at this. That colour is also identical. The shades of grey are the same. What? No what? No what? How does that happen? I think minds are sufficiently bent. Who thinks they know why the two identical grey squares looked so different? The black makes the grey go lighter and the white makes the grey go darker. Evie, amazing. Spot on. Now, the way this mind bender works is that when you're looking at the grey on the white background, there's lots of light coming off the white paper. And when that hits the back of your eye, the cells in the back of your eye in the retina, it turns them down a little bit. 
And so that's why that grey looks a bit darker. It also turns down the grey as well as the white, so the grey square appears darker too. And the opposite happens in the black square. There's less light entering the back of your eye because of the black, and so the cells get turned up a bit. And that's why that grey looks lighter. Whose mind was bent? Mine! I want you all to look at the pictures of the desert. The pictures are the same, they're just mirror images, and above them are two blocks of colour with a white dot. So we're going to make you see the pictures of the desert differently. Who thinks we can do that? No! But we can, because this is mind-benders. So this illusion only works if you follow the instructions really carefully. So we want to start by looking at this dot for 30 seconds, and then at the end of 30 seconds, you're going to look at the lower dot. OK, is everyone ready to stare at the top white dot? Yeah! Starting now. 30 seconds, so stay fixated on that dot. Do not move your eyes anywhere else. Keep looking at the top white dot. How are we doing, Sand? 23, 22, 21, so stay, 20. Stay looking at the white dot. Don't move your eyes around. Don't look at anything else. Just keep your eyes on that top white dot. You are allowed to blink, but just keep looking at the dot. The 10, keep looking. 9, 8, 7, Now, when I six. say you're going to flick your eyes, to the lower dot, but only when I say three, two, one. Look at the lower white dot now. Oh! Oh I think some of you noticed that when you looked at the lower white dot, the deserts appeared a bit different, didn't they? Katina, what did you see? I saw that the right one looked darker. Why are you suddenly seeing two identical pictures as having different colours. The colours in the top kind of confuse your brain and it makes it look like the bottom one changed. So that's right, your brain is getting confused. In your normal lives, you will never, ever leave your eyes still staring at one thing for 30 seconds. Because what happens is the cells that detect green and the cells that detect red start to switch off, they get tired, they get bored. And so when you look at the bottom two pictures, what happens is this one you see without green in it, and in this one you see without red in it, even though both pictures are exactly the same. Wasn't that a brilliant mind bender? Yeah! Now, can you see these two arrows? Yeah. yeah. Who believes that I can switch those arrows around so they're pointing in the opposite direction without touching the arrows? No! Well, I'm going to prove you wrong. Right, watch this. About there. OK. Now, what I want you to do is come and stand in front and have a look at the bottom arrow. Ava, come and have a look. It actually is. It actually is. Were you not expecting it to be? No. <laughs> That's really good. Awesome. Megan, you're up. It's the other way. It's going the other way? Are you surprised? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We've like fully bent your mind. Like Megan's mind has been like. <laughs> Time for our ouchers to try this for themselves. Whoa, that is pretty awesome, Zant. Does anyone have any idea how the trick works? Annie, what do you think? Is it something to do with like the angles? Angles. Angles is a very important word. Yes. Well, Sophie, what do you think? When the light comes in and goes through the water, it like switches kind of like, you know, when you're on your phone and you're taking a picture and you're leaning that way, then it would switch. Yes, it is a bit like the phone in that in your phone there is a lens and the glass of water is acting like a lens. So yes, that's a lovely answer. OK, so the way this trick works is by a thing called refraction. And refraction happens when light goes from one substance into another. So it's not reflection, it's refraction. When the glass is empty, light travels straight through it. But when the glass is full, the light bends as it travels more slowly in water. This changes the direction of the light towards the middle and out the opposite side. Does that explanation make sense? Yeah! yeah. Well, there we go. Light bent, minds bended it.